Hey guys, welcome back to lesson 21. Hope you guys had a great week. Let's begin with our prayers. And you'll remember we added the act of contrition at the end. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins, because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So we are on Lesson 21 on Indulgences. Now this might be a word you guys have never heard before, but it relates to what we are talking about the last few times is with confession, we know that when we commit a sin, it's not enough really that we just say we're sorry and we get forgiven. We also have to make up for all the damage that was caused by what we did wrong, by our sin. It's like if you stole someone's bike and then you just went up to your friend who had the bike and you said you're sorry and you asked them to forgive you and they do forgive you, you shouldn't just walk away and not give the bike back. You should at least give the bike back. And if you didn't, if you don't have the bike anymore, you should give something else that has the same value as the bike. Then you've done full justice and you've really made up for your sin. Now it's the same thing with God. We also have to confess that sin that we stole the bike to God before a priest when we go to confession. And then we have to make up for the damage that that did. Got, we hurt and offended God by doing that sin of stealing. So there's different ways that we can make up for that sin, even though it is forgiven. So one way we can make up for the sin is by doing the penance that's at the end of confession. The priest will say, okay, for your penance, say one Hail Mary and one Our Father, for example, um, and really pray it well. So that's our penance, and that's something we can do to make it up to God for having offended him. Now that, what we have to make up for, is called temporal punishment. It's a kind of a punishment that we deserve because we did something wrong. So that's what that's called. Now if we don't make up for what we did wrong, if we don't work off our temporal punishment, then when we die we're going to have to work it all off then before we can go to heaven. Because even, even if we are going to be happy with God forever in heaven, uh, because we die and we're in a state of grace, we don't have mortal sin on our soul, and we've been baptized, we've followed the commandments of the church, and we love God, we will have to go to purgatory, it's called. It's, it's not heaven, it's not hell. It's a place where you go before heaven, where you work off all of the temporal punishment. You make up for all of your sins there, all the ones you haven't already made up for. And only then, when you're done, can you go to heaven. So we want to make sure that while we're here on earth, and we're knowing, we're loving, we're serving God, we want to make sure that we work off all of the punishment we have for our sins so that we can go straight to heaven when we die. We don't want to be in purgatory for a long time. So one way we can do that is making or getting indulgences. So 
That's what an indulgence is for. So now let's, let's look at the lesson. Look at that first question. What is an indulgence? Altogether, an indulgence is the remission in whole or in part of the temporal punishment due to sin. Is an indulgence a pardon of sin or a license to commit sin? Altogether, an indulgence is not a pardon of sin nor a license to commit sin. And one who is in a state of mortal sin cannot gain an indulgence. How many kinds of indulgences are there? There are two kinds of indulgences, plenary and partial. What is a plenary indulgence? A plenary indulgence is the full remission of the temporal punishment due to sin. What is a partial indulgence altogether? A partial indulgence is the remission of a part of the temporal punishment due to sin. How does the church, by means of indulgences, remit the temporal punishment due to sin? The church, by means of indulgences, remits the temporal punishment due to sin by applying to us the merits of Jesus Christ and the superabundant satisfactions of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of the saints, which merits and satisfactions are its spiritual treasury. <coughs> Excuse me. What must we do to gain an indulgence? Altogether, to gain an indulgence we must be in the state of grace and perform the works enjoined. Okay, well, what does that mean? So what do we really have to do to get an indulgence? Well, an indulgence is normally just, in some cases, it's a prayer that we have to say. And the more we really mean it and we love God when we say it, and we're saying it as penance to make up for our sins, then the bigger, in a sense, the indulgence will get. The more we'll work off our temporal punishment. So then we'll have less time we have to work off and, and, and serve and suffer in purgatory. Sometimes it's a prayer. Sometimes it's an action, like giving service to the poor. Um, sometimes it's really specific, like in a certain country, it might be you might be able to get an indulgence by going to a specific place and doing a specific thing, like go to the shrine of the Blessed Virgin Mary in this city and get some holy water from the fountain of holy water there and then do something. I'm, I'm making that up, but some indulgences are very specific and that's great because it helps us um, to really do real things and know that we can offer them up for our sins. Uh, so this year, we're in the year of St. Joseph right now. Did you guys know that? This whole year is dedicated to St. Joseph. Um, so there's some really cool new indulgences that we have now in the church that the Pope has approved. The Pope is the one who can tell us and what counts as an indulgence. Uh, and I'll tell you one of them that we can do. So this one is a plenary indulgence, which is the, the best one. It means that if we do it well, we remove all of our temporal punishment due to sin. So if we do this plenary indulgence really well, and then if we were to die right afterward, it would mean that we would go straight to heaven if we did the plenary indulgence perfectly. Uh, so the indulgence is to uh, go to Holy Communion, so receive communion, and on the same day, go to confession, then also say a prayer for the intentions of the Pope. So the Pope might be praying for all of those who are suffering from cancer, let's say. So we would say a prayer to say, I also am going to pray with the Pope for all those who are suffering with cancer, for example. Um, and then lastly, 
spend half an hour meditating on the Our Father prayer. So that means just for half an hour reflecting what the Our Father prayer means and asking God to help you understand what this prayer really means and thinking of the word, saying it slowly. If we do that for half an hour, we also go to Holy Communion, go to confession, and we pray for the intentions of the Pope, then that is the indulgence. Then we will have, if we did it really well, we'll have all of the temporal punishment due to our sin removed. And if we don't do it perfectly, if we don't really mean it, or if we don't really love God, uh, or if we're really distracted when we're making the prayer, then... Uh, then it will at least be a partial indulgence. So we'll still get a part of our temporal punishment removed, which is a great thing. And if you guys ever do an indulgence, you can also do it for someone else. It doesn't have to be for you. So you could do that prayer, uh, the indulgence for St. Joseph, and offer it up for your own father or for your mom or for your brother or sister. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you uh, enjoy the game quiz also that you do well. Uh, I hope you guys also try and do that plenary indulgence in this year of St. Joseph, and I'll catch you next week. Take care. God bless.